Hi, I'm Jamie. This is Dead Dodge Garage, and this is a pile of ignition parts. The point of this video is to explain ignition system basics, describe a couple of the systems used in classic era Mopars, hand you some diagnostic tips in case you can't get your Mopar to run, and then show you some performance alternatives. It seems important to note at this point, once again, that I am not an expert. I have no certificates or degrees. What I do have is years of practical experience diagnosing and repairing these vehicles. Here's where the magic happens in the ignition system, the coil. The coil has two internal windings, a primary winding on the outside connected to these, and a secondary winding in the middle connected to the output. The coil makes a spark after being charged and then collapsing. It is charged by putting power in here and ground here. Don't you ever call here again! The simplest of these ignition systems is the points system. In these systems, voltage is connected here, and points inside the distributor are connected here. A look inside the points distributor while it's in action shows you what it does. As the shaft spins around, these little cam lobes actuate the points here. They open, and close. Every time they do this, they connect this wire to ground. I know this stuff's pretty basic. If you know this already, just bear with me here. So, every time this coil is grounded, it charges. Every time the ground is disconnected, as in when the points open, it collapses and produces a spark. Just functionally, this is an important thing to note. If that's how breaker points trigger a coil, what does this guy do? He does exactly the same thing. Grounds out the coil so it can be charged and then removes that ground so it can spark. I mean, this one doesn't, it says bad. Now that we understand what these systems are doing, let's take a look at the circuits that make them work. And go! The points ignition is extremely basic. You really only have three components other than the key switch, that is a ballast resistor, a coil, and a distributor. The ballast resistor's job is to drop the voltage coming into the coil during normal operation to something that won't kill it. The distributor's job is to trigger the coil at an appropriate time that it can fire each of the cylinders on the engine. The coil's job is to make the sparks. This is a two-post Chrysler ballast resistor found in every classic muscle era Chrysler vehicle. Anytime anyone has any issue at all with one of these vehicles and asks for help on the internet, it is inevitable that someone will chime in and say, It's the ballast resistor! And I kind of understand why they say that, because these systems apparently are somewhat mystifying to some people, and the ballast resistor is apparently a relatively mystifying part. Allow me to describe to you the symptoms of ballast resistor failure. If, when you hit the key in your classic era Mopar vehicle, your engine fires, but then dies as soon as you release the key from start to the run position, your ballast resistor is bad. Unless you have an issue here at ignition one. This is easy to diagnose. With a test light or a multimeter, with the key in the run position, Check this side of the ballast resistor for power. If there is power, it's the ballast resistor. If with a good charged battery and the key in the run position and experiencing the previously mentioned symptoms, you do not have power here. Your next place to check would be in the wiring. The likely culprits would be the firewall disconnect, which we did discuss in the charging system video, the disconnect from the ignition switch underneath the steering column, or the ignition switch itself. There are different tests that can be done for any of those issues, but I'm not going to cover them today. Before we look at the electronic ignition system, I would just like to note, functionally speaking, with a ballast resistor failure or a circuit issue in ignition, one, the primary ignition power circuit, the reason your vehicle will start and then die when the key is released is because during cranking, the ignition is powered through 
Ignition two, which in most classic muscle era Mopars is the brown wire. Here is a poorly drawn artist's rendering of the factory Mopar electronic ignition system fitted to vehicles from 1973 onward. While it's a little messy and hard to understand, the fundamentals are clear. Functionally, it does exactly the same thing as the points ignition, which is produce a spark. But the way it does that is slightly different. There's a magnetic pickup here in the distributor, which tells the module here when it's time to fire a spark. A couple important notes on this system. First off, the ballast resistor wiring, at least in the case of the two post, is exactly the same. However, many factory vehicles had a four post resistor. The reason for that is the original control modules had five wires. The fifth wire was powered through this resistor. Later systems eliminated the four post ballast resistor and the fifth pin, and they only use the two pin resistor. Side note, you can retrofit a four pin module in place of a five pin module, but not the other way around. Because the wiring is the same as the point system, the diagnosis for what we were talking about earlier is exactly the same. If your vehicle starts but then dies when you release the key, your ballast resistor is bad. This is because the coil is not being powered during ignition one regular ignition operation. Here is a look at an electronic distributor in operation. You can see pretty clearly what it does. In place of the cammed wheel, there is a reluctor wheel with teeth. As the teeth pass next to the pickup, the magnetic field changes and a signal is sent to the module. As you can see, the points in electronic distributors are extremely similar. In fact, if it's not obvious, they use exactly the same cap and rotor. Say you have a car or a truck with an electronic ignition system fitted from the factory. Let's say one morning you go out and hit the key and all your car does is crank. It does not fire. It does nothing. Point the first. It is not the ballast resistor. In truth, your issue could be any of these components. However, in my experience, it's almost never the coil. So I'd like to focus on these. In the case of the failure of either of these components, you'll have no sparks while cranking your engine. However, there is one quick and easy test to determine which component has failed. To check for spark, which is something you should have been doing anyway to have reached the conclusion that this is your issue, you're going to want to unhook the coil wire from the distributor cap and set it somewhere near to ground, ideally a ground which is not covered in gasoline or near to your person. In the case of a distributor failure on a Mopar electronic ignition system, when you turn the key on and then off, you should see one spark. I like to call this a test spark. In truth, I don't know why it does this, but I do know that when it's powered on, the module precharges the coil, and when the key is released, it releases that charge. If you get a test spark, but you get no spark during cranking, it is most likely the distributor pickup which has failed. There are other issues, such as the wiring from the pickup to the module, you should probably look at, but most likely, it's time to throw a distributor in that thing. If you do not have a test spark, the module is not firing the coil or the coil is bad, but I would suspect the module. The first thing to check, much like the voltage regulator, would be ground. These are case grounded, which means any corrosion or rust or poor connection between the back of this module and the body could result in no spark. Similarly, loose screws or bolts which I've seen many times as these generally mount to simply sheet metal, could cause the same issue. Before I move on, I want to circle back to something important about points ignitions, which I forgot. And that's silly, considering it is a very common issue. Let's say you're trying to get a car running that's been sitting for a long time. Maybe a rotten old dart you just bought out of a field. Speaking from experience here, it's very likely that your points ignition is not going to give you a spark. And here's why. As these things sit, they tend to corrode in this connection. Corrosion in this connection means no ground. As discussed previously, no ground means no spark. So here's how to check this. 
with the key in the on position and a freshly charged battery, of course, take a screwdriver and just start stabbing around in here. If you bridge this plate to this arm, it should spark. If you carefully, without touching ground, open this connection, it should spark. If it doesn't, take a file, sandpaper, or the tip of your screwdriver and clean inside these points. Repeat until you see a spark. Obviously, this is all done with the key in the on position. You could also have an assistant crank the engine for you or take your handy dandy screwdriver over to the starter relay. When the engine turns, you should see a spark in that gap. If you don't, keep cleaning. Here are some common performance ignition alternatives. The first is the dual point system. These work by spreading the work of the points between two sets. There's a lead set, which opens first, and a follow set, which opens second. This is a Pertronix. A Pertronix is retrofitted into a factory distributor. It is an electronic control solution. These are a couple of performance distributors, an XL and an MSD. Generally, I like to steer away from these because they are expensive. But there's another option I'd like to discuss in this Mopar Ignition video. And it's from a Chevy. Much like the one-wire alternator, the HEI control module is a fantastic piece. It's cheap, it's readily available in any parts store, and it's very easy to adapt to work on your Chrysler. All it takes is a factory electronic distributor, a control module, and a performance coil like this one, which can live happily without a ballast resistor. This is a rudimentary drawing showing you how it works, and it kind of leaves out some detail. What's important here is key power is going to come in directly to the coil, and that is going to be shared to the control module. But on your Mopar, that needs to be ignition one and ignition two, because ignition one loses power during cranking. Ignition two has power only during cranking. With those two put together, it will fire up and run. If you're interested in this swap, I highly recommend it. I don't even buy Mopar electronic control modules anymore. I just go straight for the HEI. An important point though, I have learned this time and time again, but I just keep getting it wrong. If you get this wired and you fire the car up and it runs like crap, you probably have these two pins backwards. No matter how many times I try, I always get it wrong. So if it runs like crap, won't rev, maybe it's backfiring, flip those wires. In the case of any of these systems, you should definitely seek out a detailed and color-coded wiring diagram. I hope these have helped at least understand how they work. Final thoughts on ignition systems. I am a firm believer that the factory pieces are just fine for most applications. If you're not trying to run in the sevens and do humongous wheelies, points or an electronic system like I've described will work just fine. You really don't need to run out and spend 500, 600, 700, however many hundreds on an MSD system for a street driven car. I hope I've helped enhance your understanding of ignition systems at least a little bit. I'm sure, as usual, that I'm forgetting something very important. If you do have any further questions, go ahead and throw them down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and happy hunting.